<laughs> what's up you guys happy where are you so far over <laughs> i got a new chair it's messing up everything happy tuesday all right guys we're here for episode 35 we're talking about relationships this week relationships. um we were laughing before we got on this so let's tell you guys just a little story that doesn't really mean much but it's pretty funny so when brandon and i hate eight when uh our first like two dates life. that we went on uh, we had like the same clothes on. So our very first date, we both had like white sweaters on and we went to a bar. You guys, I'm not kidding. I had like four drinks spilled in my white sweater. So one of the funnest nights I've ever had in my life. But anyway, we go to do this video and we have the same shirt on. So we've done this forever. People joke like, oh, you guys have been together too long, but no, we've done it forever. So, uh, okay. So yesterday we did the intro. We started talking about, um, why it's important first to take care of yourself if you want to improve your relationships in your life. And remember you guys, when we say relationships, we're talking about um, romantic relationships, friendship relationships. <laughs> um, oh, see, you're just thinking about us, Nate. We appreciate that. So friendships, um, work relationships, right? Like any relationship where there's give and take. Um, first, the more you take care of yourself and the more you work on your own development and meet your own needs, um, the better that relationship is going to be. Okay. But then you got to think about, okay, if that's first, what's the second piece? So today we wanted to talk about the six human needs and how are you meeting them for your partner and what that can do to improve your relationship. So if you haven't watched our video, I think that was like four weeks ago. We did an actual workshop on the six human needs. Um, go watch that. It will literally change your life. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that. So, want to start? Yes. And so with that being said, you guys, it's the reason why we dive so much into this of like this, your being or this being your journey is because <laughs> oftentimes in relationships, what we see and what we experience on there is I need somebody else to yet again, fill the holes, fill the gaps within me. And we come from the standpoint of things can't change unless you change. Things don't get better unless you get better, right? And so it's, it's coming from that understanding of the more awareness and the more understanding you have for yourself, the more compassion, the more empathy, the more just understanding you're going to have for others in your life, right? Even whether it's a romantic sense or whether it's just your coworkers, your friends, your family, or whatever it may be, right? And so... Well, and we think for everything, like, you have to go internal first and the external will follow, right? So, like, you want to change how you feel about yourself, go internal, the external will follow. You want to you want to have a better relationship in your life, go internal, the external will follow. Well, and I think for those who have been following, you've heard <laughs> us talk about, like, the world being a projector, right? Like, everything that we experience is a projection of ourself, right? And we do that with relationships of, oh, you're not giving me enough love. Oh, you're not doing this. When all actuality, the more... Uh, the reality of the scenario is you're not giving yourself enough love. You're not giving yourself enough compassion. You're not filling your own cup in order to to pour into others, right? And so that's what we're going to get into today is how we can um, implement that for ourselves so we're no longer having to um, seek that from other people. And then at the same time, we can learn to pour into others. And so, uh, really yeah. so the way I like to think about it, you guys, is you've probably heard like be the light in the world that you want to see. Right? So you can replace light with anything like, right? Like be the certainty in your relationship that you want to feel. Be the blah, blah, right? So it's like being the thing that you're craving most because if you start to be that thing and you give that thing, it will come back to you and you will receive, right? So we talk about, we talk about energy all the time and a vibration, but it's like the energy that you're living in, not like, hey, I've got energy to go work out, but like the, the vibration, the, the vibe that you're living at, when you are living at that and you're giving from that place, you will always attract back to you. So if you're in a low vibe, if you're in a crummy state and you're like, God, why is my partner being such a jerk today? Well, it's actually that you're at that vibe and you're attracting that vibe. All right. Should we start this? Yep. So with that being said, you guys, um, yet again, if you haven't watched the uh, Humans Needs video way back... <laughs> episode i think like three um go <laughs> and watch it, it. yeah, yeah it i think three. it was like episode three but go back and watch it and so um when we're talking about your needs you guys we all have them right like they are ingrained in us we all have our that we all have needs the good news about them there's only six of them right and so um the first one is certainty next one is uncertainty then there's significance then there's love and connection and then there's growth and contribution and so um with all those you guys we all need those and for all of us that we arrange those differently based off of our modeling of the world what we feel is important to us all these other things that we talked about back then, right? But if we don't understand those for ourselves, I'm surely not going to understand that for her, right? And so that's why we come from the place of it's, it's vital that you understand these things for yourself and vital you understand your needs, your values, your rules, your boundaries, 
all of these aspects, you're, you're modeling the world. So then you can see the world through a different lens and you can come from a place of, oh, you know what? I see it this way, but she sees and interprets things this way. Maybe my way isn't the only way to do certain things, right? Like when I, when I understand something over here, that means I have a blind spot over here, right? And so when I can understand and I can see that and come from a place of understanding and not for judgment for myself, then I get to see the same thing of like, oh, she has this view of the world because that's what her experience is. That's what her beliefs, that's what all these references has for her to experience. And so that's where if I don't see that and come from a place of compassion and not a place of judgment, that's when I, we can actually see growth and, and, um, and, um, mending <laughs> of a relationship together. Yeah. All right? So so I think whether your relationship is amazing or it, it has some struggles or there are pieces that, that you want to improve, like no matter what, if you lean into these things, it's going to get better, right? And so like Brandon said, it's understanding your own needs and when you understand yours and if you know, like like I know Brandon's values, I know his love languages, I know the things that, I know his needs, like kind of the hierarchy and I know how I can help fill them, right? And so when you start to know that for yourself and you can start to see that and, and be in a conversation with your partner about like, what do you actually need right now and how can I support you? Then you can actually show up and do those things um, in a way that fills their cup because sometimes like we're not, yes, we're supposed to fill our own cup, but sometimes we need someone else to like help us fill that cup and remind us where we get that stuff and how we get back to it. So, um, so let's talk about certainty. So how would you help your, your partner, your person, um, improve their need for certainty? So it, it kind of goes back to yet again, what's the rules and the value or what's the rules and the boundaries surrounding that, right? Like how does your partner, um, define certainty for themselves, right? Like, do they define it of like, we need a million dollars in the bank, right? Like we just need a roof over our head. We just need to make sure that we have meals coming in on the table, right? Like do, what is their, what is their, um, definition of it and how do they meet that? And how can you help fill that cup when it comes to certainty, right? Like, when I think if you go back to certainty is safety, right? Like for so many of us, like we just want to feel safe in our relationship, right? Safe that five years from now, he's still going to be here. Safe that I can be myself in that relationship. Safe that I can say what I need to say, right? Or in times right now where life is crazy, like sometimes you just need to know that you have safety inside your house and safety with that person, right? And so I think with certainty, really think about like safety and creation. And if you can, again, get into creation of your life together, that creates a lot more certainty for both of you, right? Like that knowing that like I have full knowing that he's not going anywhere and that I'm not going anywhere, right? And and so like having that and being like, okay, how do we create this life that we want creates not only certainty for the two of us, but it also creates certainty in the partnership, right? And it creates certainty and it creates safety for our children and the people around us and probably our gym members, right? If you guys have heard the story, we started gym four months into this. If any of them had known that, there wasn't a lot of certainty that, uh, that the gym was going to be around. But now, they're like, oh, you guys have been here for 10 years. Like, you're a solid couple. We're certain there, right? All right. So, yep. So the next one would be uncertainty, right? Like the, the counterbalance of that, right? Like the variety. How do you, how do you, how do you fill that cup for your, for your partner, right? Like, do they always need to have some spontaneous, um, adventures? Do they need to go on hikes? Do they need to have, a uh, surprise parties do they need to have all these things and yet again like it ties into the you won't, we'll get into love languages and those things later that will also help fill these things but at the same time it's understanding that everything we do is to meet our needs right and so if i can um understand of like oh my partner wants adventure they want a party they want you know a, a they want to paint a different color in the room, right? Like whatever it may be to add some sort of spontaneity can also bring about that, right? And also at the same time frame is how does your partner meet when problems occur, right? Like do do you have to be that cornerstone of certainty in the moment of uncertainty, right? Like is your partner in like anxious mode throughout this entire quarantine and have you had to be kind of the rock, the cornerstone to be there through that? Not to mention sometimes this one goes out to the guys, sometimes Sometimes being the rock and the cornerstone doesn't mean solving the problem. Sometimes that means just listening. All right. Like I know that's a hard, that's a hard one for me to swallow because yet again, what I do as a profession, what I do as like my role is I see a problem. I go and solve it. I do everything I can to try to help and do those things. And what I've had to learn for myself is when she is verbalizing certain things, that doesn't necessarily mean she wants it solved. She just wants it to kind of just vent and move through her, right? And so sometimes my meeting that that's, uh, 
that that portion of certainty, you also may need to be that cornerstone of certainty. Yeah. Um, and I think when it comes to uncertainty, if you think about, sometimes we, we were talking about this like in the first couple years of relationships, right? There's there's like that energy that's different and it, we'll tell you guys our first date story eventually, but like there's an energy in the beginning, right? But you are thinking about, well, when is our date night? What are we gonna do? Where can I, how can I take this person to this? Can I show them like, if you're super passionate about something, it's doing that stuff together. And then does that change over time, right? Life starts to get boring and it's, oh, we got kids now, we got a business, we got this, we got that. And like, I think sometimes the uncertainty piece is what sort of just falls away. Mm -hmm. And so if you can go, okay, well, what was the excitement, which was just uncertainty in the beginning and, and how do you shift that, right? And so I think in, in the beginning of relationships, there's a lot of uncertainties. You don't know where you're going. And then sometimes I think that piece falls away and it's just like, oh, this is just our life. This is what we do. Well, it's the old, boring, married couple, yeah. right? Like there's there's that tagline for a reason is because it's the law of familiarity, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's a human nature aspect of when something's been there forever, the law of familiarity says that you start to take, just take it for granted and just kind of just you move on from it, right? Where, where when you're in a relationship, where the, yet again, whether that's when you first get a job and you're trying to make a good name for yourself or you're just starting a relationship or whatever it may be, it's starting that same thing of how did you act when you started that relationship, right? Like I hope that you, yet again, that's why we start with yourself so you don't have to fake anything. You can just be yourself and hopefully that person's receptive to it. But at the same time, were you spontaneous? Were you guys going out together? Were you guys going out dancing? Were you going on hikes? Were you going to movies, right? Like, were you Just painting all the things? things? We don't do anymore. Yeah, I know. I'm just <laughs> the list, right? Like, but what were you doing when the when those things happened that created and cultivated your guys' relationship? And as you go through that, well, are you living into the story now of oh, we've been married for ten years? Now that must mean that we don't have to do anything and we just take each other for granted, right? So we don't not do those things because of that. It's, it's yes. really much harder to. <laughs> Go on a hike with little kids, but we're getting that. Okay, so number three is significance. Yeah, significance. We always do these in different orders, so <laughs> um, I always think love comes next. But so significance. So that's a big one, right? And I think when you think about significance, is um, to me in a relationship, it's feeling needed, right? Like I want to feel needed by my kids. That fills up my cup for significance. I want to feel needed from him. That fills up my need for significance, right? And so I think it's understanding too in the relationship, how do you like what makes someone feel significant? And then how do you how do you honor that that identity for them so that you can fill up their your cup from that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's, and yet again, this kind of tie into, you know, the love languages and everything else. Like, if you're familiar with those, there's five of them. I think there's six of them. We'll get into that later. Um, but, you know, it could be words of affirmation, right? Like, some people, they just need to be told, like, you're beautiful. You've done an amazing job today. You know what? The kids did you do. You're doing a great job with those things. Like, right? Like, basically, a lot of these things come down to how did they receive love as a kid, right? Like, how did they receive that, right? Like, were they, as long as they were praised and told they did a good job, they were content they were awesome with it right like did they have to receive a gift right like they had to be given a golden star they had to give a a, a trophy for those things right like do they still re- want to receive gifts in order to feel like they're loved and feel like they're they're being chased after right like is it physical right like i and for as much as usually the guys are always like yes it's mine is 100 percent physical Usually it's not, all right? Usually it's not, like, don't get me wrong, like, yes, that's an amazing component of a relationship, but at the same time, like, for most of us, for some, I'm not going to say for most, but for some people, it really is not. A lot of times it's getting away from that. I mean, sometimes if you're not aware of that, it's more of like, well, what bothers you more when you don't see those things, right? Like, and I've learned for me, like forever, it was always like, yes, as a male, of course, it's the physical. For me, what I've learned for myself, it's quality time. Right, like I want ten. I'm doing a whole love languages thing right now. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Well, I want like I want like ten minutes of quality time to be with my with her and be able to talk and be able to go through these things and and actually be able to in, express those things for me to feel significant. And you know, I won't go through all of them, but essentially, it's being aware of those things and being aware of your partners. And also, that's why it goes back to being aware of what is their model, what how were they raised, how did they receive certain things, and if you're not sure, what do they usually drop hints on right like for Courtney every now and then it's like well when are you going to do the dishes right like that's what is it the contribution Isn't right acts of service yeah, it's the acts of service, right? Like that's an act of service for her to feel like she's appreciated. I yet again is is in order to clean up, do those things. Like as simple as it is, that's speaking to her and that lets her feel that that role of significance. Yeah. 
All right, yes, Don, Don, thank you. (laughs) We think you're awesome too. All right, so number four is love and connection, right? And so obviously if you're in a relationship, that's probably trying to meet your, your need for love and connection, right? But I think so often, and you can tell me if you think it's different, but I think the, that often um, there's, a, there's a disconnect between love and connection, right? And so in relationships that are boring or stagnant or whatever, I feel like there's, and, and you hear people say this all the time, right? Like, I always love you, but I don't like you, right? But I think what happens, honestly, is sometimes when people find some distance and they find some space and they're not, they're not meeting each other's needs that they fall more into connection versus love right and so it's leaning back into like what what does love feel like to you and how do you give that so that you can actually receive it does that do you agree with that no i would agree with that i think we never know what each other well and i think you know a lot of this is yet again when we first meet somebody when we first have a partner right like we're attracted to them everything's amazing we talked about this yesterday, right? Like even despite all your friends, your relatives, everything else be like, you're crazy. You should not be with that person. Right. There's a biological component of male, female, right? Like when, when there's positive and negative energy coming together and connects the, there's a biological component that strives for us to recreate and procreate to keep our race going. Now, what oftentimes happens is that, is that I would say that's connection, not love. All right, just be on that sense of things. And usually about that two, two and a half years That's time lust. frame is you can call you can call it lust, call it connection, either one on there. Um, but at the same time, I think that about that two and a half to two and a half year time frame is what kind of science shows is that starts to dwindle down on there. And then after that, if there's no love, you're left with connection. And if there's no actual connection there that keeps the relationship going because you need passion, you need yet again, those two energy systems able to connect to each other. And if you're not having love, because to me, if you're not, yet again, if, if in order to express love, you have to have a sense of vulnerability, mm-hmm. right? And if you're and if you're guarded within yourself because you aren't truly understanding and taking ownership and understanding these things for yourself, and you may have um, blockers or protectors or all these coming up, even on a subconscious level that you don't even know about. But to me, you can't fully express and experience love if you have guards and you have protectors up. Because that because yet again, you need to have that vulnerability. You need to have that sense on there. And so you'll you'll oftentimes settle for connection, but you won't allow yourself to experience love. And being able to understand that and see how your partner receives that and see yet again, we'll talk about energies, right? Like we noticed for us, like when we're both in like go mode, we're both in like positive masculine energy and it starts to, we start to butt heads a little bit, right? And so it's being able to identify and see those things and is it actually affecting your love and your connection um, or just love or connection in your relationships? When I think to us females, a lot of times like we don't, and everybody probably, but I think we see, I see it more in females where it's like we don't love our bodies, which is just a, an outward um display of not actually loving ourselves not feeling our worth not feeling any of those things and I know for us I mean obviously I had had body image issues forever and like once I truly started to love myself then I could actually accept love right and so it's understanding like how much do you love yourself because the more that you love yourself the more you'll actually be able to give and to receive love all right what's next growth growth Sorry, yeah, so I mean, I would say, you know, for us, this has probably been one of the more beneficial things for us in the last two years on our own relationship. I um, <laughs> so, I mean, on that on the level of allowing us, because it's that all that like you're either growing or you're dying, right? And a relationship is, is, is nothing different, right? Like your relationship is always an evolving and growing component of just life, right? And if you're in that sense of content and you're in that sense of like, you know what, I want things to say exactly where they are and you kind of just pull up your chair and sit there, Odds are that that might do for a short amount of time, but sooner or later your partner is going to either grow past you and they're not going to be happy in that or you're going to go backwards the other way, right? And so it's being able to evolve, right? And it's being able to to develop e- develop yourself which in turn is going to develop each other right like i i know that we've been fortunate enough while courtney's been going through her journey i've been able to kind of ride along with her and go through the journey as well but at the same time i've been able to go through my own self-discovery and understand my own flaws my own weak links in the chain my own things that i have my own 
healing to do. So she loves hearing that. <laughs> See, my, when we started, yes. so my mentor is on right now. So when when I started my program, I would say healing. He'd be like, I don't think it. I don't think it's healing. And now he's like, Oh, it's healing. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> you know, but, the, but it, uh, being able to see my own my own areas that I need to grow in, and be able to yet again, if, as long as I'm growing. I know our relationship is going to grow. If, if, when she's growing, I know our relationship is going to grow. But at the same time, being able to bond and grow together, but yet, but I think more times than not, there becomes that sense of coming from a place of ego and judgment and everything else. Of what do you mean? You're you, what are you learning over there? Why why are you learning it? Why like right? Like I thought like I think for most of us, if I'm judging her about her branching out and learning new philosophies and studying new religions or seeing different things or whatever usually that's a that's usually a more of a, a light being shown on my own insecurities my own areas that i need to identify more and go into inquiry and go into questioning and come from a place of curiosity for myself not coming from a place of judgment because oftentimes you guys i wouldn't say often i'd say really all the time when i have issues with her I have issues really with myself. When I'm judging her, I'm judging myself. It just comes off, it's very easy for me to project as opposed to turning the light and turning the mirror around and looking at myself of, oh, I'm having the issues internally, I'm just projecting that yet again, the movie screen, the projector coming out as somebody else playing it out in my, in my own internal. Well, and we've seen this a ton. I mean, so when I started my program, obviously like I had a huge amount of growth, but I had so much like, we would do, you know, we would do the module and, and we'd have our, our, cl our, our class per se. And, and then I was always talking like what was coming through to me, what we were learning and he was learning right along with us. But we saw in both the programs that I, that I did that, that there was this, this pretty big gap of, of women that just were not talking to their husbands at all. And they were getting farther and farther con like disconnected. Um, and, and we joke at, at, in Hunger for Happiness that there's a lot of people that end up breaking up and they, they find themselves and they realize that that person's just not there with them. And so for us, we've, we've managed to, and this is, I think the cool thing of like, grow yourself, grow your partner, help them level up, right? Like I, I feel like for us, it's this like super supportive leveling up. Like, well, I learned this, I learned this and we teach each other. Right. And we also know like in, in certain aspects, like where one of us needs more help or where, you know, and so it's, it's being loving in that, but also being sometimes being like, get off the couch and go do the thing. Right. And so it's like, it's understanding how to grow together and how to see a bigger vision for your life as a couple and as a family than just on your own. Well, and I will say, you know, there has to be a level of humility for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeti, and, and it just comes from a place of ownership and awareness. You know, when Courtney was going through, you know, when were you 80 K? 2017. 2017. She um, was a um, ADK. Um, what would you call that? Promoter. Promoter for Lavelle, right? Like, um, luckily for us, like she busted her ass and was able to strive and accomplish that um, because you know what? That saved our business. It saved a lot of senses for us. But as a man, like my ego was was unknowingly taking a hit, right? Like she was very much in the masculine of like, no, I'm going to accomplish this shit. I'm going to get it done. Right. And like, we, I was having problems. I would create problems just to, just to, I could feel like I had a role. Right. And there was coming from a lot of bitterness and everything else, but it was understanding that all that bitterness was coming from was because I was bitter towards myself because I wasn't feeling like I was feeling, fulfilling my role as a man, right? Like I wasn't fulfilling my role as, as the, as the man in the house, right? Like I wasn't the breadwinner. I wasn't bringing home all these things. We're instead looking at it now of understanding like, well, we're a team, right? Like we're a team. It's not necessarily a competition. Like do, yes. Do I have a high aspirations for myself? Absolutely. Do I, do I want to hold myself to those? Absolutely. But at the same time, I understand that when I'm, when I'm really creating bitterness towards her, I'm bringing down the team. <laughs> Right, like I should be striving for these things of like go kill it, right? Like that helps both of it us out. It drove me crazy, but we didn't understand it, right? Like we did not have any awareness around this back then because like I had really taken this leader role and my team was growing and it was awesome. We had all this momentum, and I'd be like, I just need you to be with Carson, and he'd be like, I have to go fix this wall at the gym, and I'm like, what the actual f? And I used to get so mad because I was like, why can't you support the team? But like, I didn't know what was happening and he didn't know what was happening. And so now looking back, like I was always in my masculine. We're gonna do a thing on masculine and feminine energy, but I was always in my masculine. So I was always gonna go hustle, push. And like, we were doing the thing 
and we were we were making a lot of money in this company and so it was hard for him to like to 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 balance that and now looking at it like now when one of us like gets something and runs with it the other one's completely supportive because we understand it but I also understand that I have to one of my other mentors always says hang up your lady balls so like when I'm done working and I'm done in that mode and I'm done creating then I have to step back and be in my feminine and actually relax into that so that's probably tomorrow's topic okay what's the um, next one? last one you guys is contribution and I think honestly for relationships this is probably the most important and I, uh, you know, and I think oftentimes when there's problems in relationships, we get very fixed on, well, my partner's not doing this stuff for me, right? There becomes that, that bitterness side of things of like, uh, you know what, you're not doing that for me, so why the hell would I do that for you, right? Like, you're not supporting me over here, so why the hell would I support you, right? Like, you're not helping me with the kids, I'm not gonna help with the kids, right? And there becomes these stories, all these manifestations, all these things that we start living into, and and it, it doesn't help anyone. And so, when you, if you yet again go back, watch the video on the on the needs when we dive more into this. But to check all the boxes, if you come from a place of contribution. The contribution checks every single one of the boxes, right? Like it will fill your need for, fill your need for um, certainty, uncertainty, significance, growth, love, connection. It will check all those boxes off. And so honestly, oftentimes you guys, if you're feeling not fulfilled in your relationship, oftentimes the question is, well, what are you doing to fill your partner's cup? Right, like, what? How are you contributing to your partner? And you're like, well, why the hell would I? Why should I fill their cup? They're not filling mine. That's not their. That's not for you to worry about. That's you getting outside yourself. That's you getting outside your own business. Your business is to do the things that are speaking to you. And when you got in that relationship, you probably did everything that you possibly could to fill that part your partner's cup, right? And so it's going back to you to do the things that you truly feel is right for you so you can fill the fill your partner's cup and be the example right like don't wait for your partner to do those things because oftentimes yet again if it's it's that projection of of my own um my own internal most likely if there i'm not my partner's not filling my cup i'm not filling my cup yeah so i think so if you see our eyes shift it's always because our kids are opening the door but i think the biggest thing with contribution too is like be again be the thing that you want right so if you need more connection if you need more love be that in your relationship and when you do that that will come back to you so um Chris, hold on <laughs> homework um so anyway hopefully you guys again go back and watch the longer video um and if you want a pdf on this we have it but honestly like the six human needs have completely changed our life the way that we understand ourselves, the way that we can relate with our children, the way that we relate with each other, the way we relate with, with our clients, with our gym members. Like, if you can get a grasp on your human needs, you can start to see what's going on with other people in this world, right? And all the stuff we talk about, like Brandon said, with modeling, with whatever, like, if you're having a conflict with somebody, you're like, well, what else is going on in their life? What else could it be, right? Maybe it's not you. Maybe your, your significant other's boss is a total jerk, and maybe they're a jerk because they had a crappy childhood. And like, right, you can start to pull back those layers and start to really understand, like, what's going on. And then, again, be the love, be the light, be, excuse me, be that thing that you want to be in the world. And if you start to do that, you start to contribute and you start to help your partner grow, like everything in your life will start to change and <clears throat> it will just start to feel easy, right? So if it's not easy, or even if it is easy, what else can you do to heighten that so you can have a better relationship and a, and a, a more elevated version of you guys as a couple or in partnerships and work or whatever it is? Well, I, know that I think on a last note on there, you guys is, if you've been in a relationship that's always like, you're not the person I, I married. You're not the person that you were when I first started dating. You're not the person, Oftentimes, you guys, you know, we, we start talking about like, okay, you're not, you don't have the same values you did when we first met. That may or may not be true, right? Like that may or may not be true. But at the same time, we make everything, we will sacrifice our values to meet our needs, mm -hmm. right? And so we may not have different value systems, but if our needs aren't being met, we will always make decisions based on our needs, right? Like, oh my, I, you, how could you cheat on me? I, I, you know what? integrity, loyalty, all these things were always at the top of your list. 
Well, at the same time, if, if they're not feeling significant, they're not feeling, you know, um, Loved. love, they're not feeling connection, they're not feeling um, variety, they're not feeling uncertainty, they're not feeling like all these things, yet again, will play into what the decisions that we do, right? And so if we can come from a different understanding and really dive into these things, it could probably eliminate a lot of that like pulling our hair out of like, what the hell are you doing? I don't understand any of the decisions you're making right now. Then it's like, oh, you're just trying to meet your need for certainty right now. You're just trying to feel, you know, for significant, right? Like apparently there's no love there. We're missing love, that connection right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like a lot of times yet again, when you dive and kind of wipe these things away, it can answer a lot of questions for you. Yeah. So, all right, guys, hopefully that helped. Um, we'll be on tomorrow. I think we're going to talk about probably masculine and feminine energy, and we'll talk about the love languages. So um, if this is hitting home, let us know. If you have questions, if you have observations, we'd love to hear them. So we appreciate you guys. Love you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Later.